Yo, top billing to ya. Listen, you have to admit, your man John Schneider with a little bit of carte blanche has done the damn thing in free agency. No doubt about that, man. Just looking at the list right here. Uh, a couple of cats that I covered in college, one being Tremaine Ancrum. I can see him slotting in at either guard spot, right? The one vacated by Damian Lewis or the one that was a damn turnstile uh, during the season. Tremaine Ancrum, I think, uh, can play some really good football. He has in the past, right? Um, going down here, Pharaoh Brown. I really like the addition of Pharaoh Brown for you guys. That man is a blocking phenom. Uh, he will get after it. Very physical tight end in that manner. You already have no offense who can take care of the heavy lifting as far as the passing game goes, right? Um, so other standouts to me will be somebody like a George Fent. Uh, your man George Fent, of course, can can swing, right? It'll be a swing tackle for you guys, right? Depending on what happens on the right side, he can go ahead and slide in right there um, behind your man Abe Lucas, no doubt about that. Uh, bringing in vets like Jonathan Hankins, right? Having those big, true nose tackle cats uh, to where you can definitely make sure that your guys who are five and three techniques play their correct position in that three, four base alignment. Um, of course, Rayshon Jenkins, a uh, veteran safety who's played some really good football there. I expect him to definitely get a chance to start, right? Or have a leg up on starting at a strong safety spot. Very physical guy. Kayvon Wallace, my dude. Another former Clemson cat that I covered, right? Tremaine Ancrum's teammate. Uh, former Philadelphia Eagle, Kayvon Wallace, I like a lot. I did not want him cut from the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, Kayvon Wallace is one of those dudes extremely versatile. Uh, he can be a playmaker. Uh, he was the best player on Philadelphia on the Philadelphia Eagles in the preseason last year uh, before they got rid of him. Of course, Sam Howell, we already talked about before. But, man, I want to concentrate right here. Um, Tyrell Dodson, I know if I didn't say anything about him, people, what about Tyrell Dodson? I'll get to him at another time, right? Tyrell Dodson, definitely one of these guys. Uh, underrated type cat, right? Might be a little overrated though for some of the stuff that people were telling me about him being the number one linebacker in the NFL or something like that according to these three letters that you guys know that I hate uh, but a very solid linebacker there no doubt about that there but Jerome Baker my boy Jerome Baker listen I did stuff for him in the past through my Miami coverage uh, I remarked that he was extremely underrated because the Miami fans hated him for some odd reason and uh, he ended up getting an extension uh, when I was telling people how good he was there. So uh, a few years later here, he finds himself in free agency, landing with the Seattle Seahawks. Perfect fit there. Jerome Baker, a running chase linebacker, no doubt about that. Guy has some, some dope wheels. Uh, he can get after it sideline to sideline. Man, Jerome Baker, definitely one of my favorite linebackers, period, point blank, for sure, is a heady player. Uh, one of these guys, man, who will collect a bunch of tackles if you keep him clean. I actually think you got to keep Dotson and Baker clean because both of these guys can get hung up on the block. But, hey, that's this day and age, man. That's why you got to be making sure that you're doing your thing above them, right, or in front of them. So, yeah, great signings by the Seattle Seahawks. Let's see what your boy Jerome Baker is about. Yo, shout outs to the great folks over at Good Chop. When my behind the scenes people approached me saying that Good Chop had interest in working with me, I couldn't have said yes fast enough. I was already familiar with them through the fitness and bodybuilding industry, so I couldn't wait to see what all the hype was about. I'm talking about high quality meats, all sourced from the USA, no antibiotics or hormones, and I'm talking about 60 plus of them drawings. It was packaged perfectly with the insulation and the dry ice, and I was blessed to get with the shrimp, the Thick cut bacon, the salmon. Oh man, you know I love those ribeyes, the ground beef, and of course you gotta have your chicken breast if you're out there with it. But you know I had to start with them ribeyes. I mean, look at the marbling on it. Your boy Jersey Murph is a steak connoisseur, so I was very impressed by those steaks right there. I had to throw a little butcher's blend seasoning on it, mixed with my peach rub. And it was on. A little bit of asparagus to top it off. Always having that asparagus around here, baby. It was time to hit that grill. I threw them drawings on my daily driver gas grill. Tried to get the internal temperature up to about 136, 137. Medium 
that's how I get down. And I was beyond impressed with the final product, and you will be too. If you head on over to goodchop.com slash YouTube, enter the promo code TOPBILLING120, they will give you $120 off across your first four boxes. No more wasting time at the grocery store hoping to get a good product. Use your time wisely and go to goodchop.com slash YouTube. Enter that promo code TOPBILLING120 and get $120 off across your first four boxes. Let's go. Top Billing. Top billing. Of Town Murph. Top Billing Billings. Now, I don't know what to make of the linebacker market. You had guys who I thought was going to be uh, really doing the damn thing, getting one-year deals like Jerome Baker and Tyrell Dodson. So keep that in mind there. I think for Seattle, it allows them to evaluate these guys while probably dipping back in the draft and grabbing a rookie contract guy as well at off-ball linebacker. So uh, that's something that I personally uh, would think that they would do, but I, you just never know, man, how these guys are thinking there. But – a uh, guy like Jerome Baker, obviously coming out of that Vic Fangio scheme, right? So played in the Fangio scheme for a year. I thought he would be a Philadelphia Eagle. I was just waiting. When I heard he was cut, I was like, oh, man, he's going to be joining Vic Fangio in Philly. So him being a Seattle Seahawk kind of blew my mind there. But you get to see this guy operate in a 3-4 defense. So you know what that means, right? You're in a 3-4 on some of these base downs, man. You're going to be working with uncovered guards. So a lot of the times you have to feel – and then spill. You got Jalen Hurts right here uh, trying to get it to the edge on this, but you're not going to outrun Jerome Baker sideline to sideline. That's just not going to happen. Uh, that boy has some wheels on him, no doubt about that right there. Phil, make sure you spill it out there. <laughs> <And Jerome, laughs> Jalen Hurts just has to sit it down, right? He sat it down like a grandpa, too. <laughs> what are we doing here? Phil right here, right, working off of Sua Opeta here, the guard. He's able to skirt around that, right? He's not going to be money uh, having to detach from blocks. That's just what it's going to be right there. But he's very good at getting around them, resetting, and then, of course, uh, you want to try to outrun him. Uh, Jalen Hurst usually can get around the corner like that, but not against Jerome Baker, right? Granddaddy Jalen Hurst is sitting it down. Right? Oh, hold on now. Let me just get in my rocking chair right quick and take a breath. <laughs> Come on, man. Baker, a very good athlete, but also very football intelligent. His FBI is very much off the charts here. A lot of these gap schemes are designed to get you out of your eye discipline. We can see right here. Watch Kelsey on the down block on the two technique here. Uh, you get the same deal from Landon Dickerson, Jordan Mailata climbing up right here to the mic, right? The nomenclature on these 3-4 defenses uh, is usually going to be Mike or Mac. And will I would imagine Jerome Baker as he is right here would be more of your weak side backer. But if you see now these days, it's hard to really designate that because most people will or a ton of people will definitely work with strength, uh, even strength. Right. So you see t multiple tight ends in the game. Right. So where's the strength of this? All right. So it's balanced. So you can ideally be the weak side player on one play. And then you could be the strong side player on the next play, meaning you're probably going to have to take on blocks, right, if something is coming to your direction there. But uh, we see them pulling a guard, pulling a guard going this way. So uh, this works out in his favor here because then you have David Long here who has to work to take on situations while he cleans up, right? He's a very, very good cleanup man. Check it out right here. Pulling a guard. Uh, look who finds right there. Hell of a stick, too. Who's that on right there? on Kenneth Gainwell. So, boom, all the action, right? Everybody moving in concert there. You see him outside, right, outside in. So, that will be the inside shoulder force. Take that presence right there. Stick that foot on the outside here. Uh, hopefully, your contain holds up, right, which it is, right? You want that contain to hold up because you want these guys to have to force themselves back inside. It's a gap scheme anyway, so it's designed to go inside. But he does a good job of taking that presence on the outside and then slicing down. Bang. Good stuff right there. I believe Jerome Baker is probably about 6'2", 225 to 230 or something like that. So he has pretty decent size for this day and age right here, but definitely not big linebacker by any stretch of the imagination, right? Pause uh, like we would see back in the day. Great help defense. You have Jalen Phillips working edge contain here. You have your man Jerome Baker does a great job 
of, like I said before, staying on the outside, navigating traffic just to bend it back inside. He very much mirrors what Kenneth Gainwell is trying to do on this zone play. And, and look at this. It is a weak side run. It's a zone play to where normally, right, you align someone like David Long to the strength of the formation here, and he gets to work take on blocks. But the advent of weak side runs as well, uh, you probably have to be a take on player as, as well. So look at that. Oh, my God. Mm. Houdini, that ass. Look at that. Steps real hard to the outside here. You got Sua Petta climbing. Looking to climb on him, but he took that presence to the outside. And here today, gone tomorrow, gets back in the gap. Presses just like Kenneth Gainwell, trying to do press organically. And uh, he gets himself a nice tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Impact tackles at or behind the line of scrimmage. That's what it's about. Once again, balanced formation. So wherever it goes, uh, he could possibly be working with the strength of the formation. It just so happens he is. So this time he has to play help defense, right? Gets it all the way on the other side to try to work contain where Andrew Van Ginkle cra crashing down here. Now he does not make this play, but he makes this play. If you get what I'm saying there, uh, having to go against stall here, uh, usually, right? If he gets on the block, he's a magnet. He's not getting off of it, but I guess working with tight ends going on around here, actually he gets to work off of Grant Calcaterra. Let me see what happened there. Yeah, no stall. Stall does double back, so stall crashes down, doubles back towards him, and he continues to work to the outside. And I watch Gainwell see him. Right, he uncovers. Now Gainwell has to flow it back towards traffic, and more and more people are there. And David Long can, comes in and cleans it up. Right, so he essentially works weak side this time. Great help defense, great football intelligence. Some of these dudes, right, if they're coming and and they're like shit. I got to work contained. They'll probably jump in with traffic and then the back will end up being able to take it to the outside. But he does a good job of showing that presence right here and then forcing it back to the inside on Kenneth Gainwell. Waiting for Christian Wilkins and all those guys to show up. Perfect. Split zone. Cross formation blocked by Stall here. Calcaterra climbing up to the second level. Jerome Baker. Watch his GPS. He's here. Comes here. Hides behind traffic, shoots out to get Swift here, who is on this zone run. You get that play action boot out of the pistol from Jalen Hurts. Once again, great eye discipline because it takes him up to there, to there, to there, and then he's on it. Solid wrap up tackler. Look at that once again. Oh, what's going on with Dickinson? <laughs> he, and his foot all in the air, right? His foot all in the air right there. And then look at that. Closes that gap on Swift. Shows presence in that gap. And then shows the ability to stay parallel to the line of scrimmage. Swift pretty much runs into it. Swift just had to really much take what he could get out of that, which would be, what, a, a yard or two, if that. When he's kept clean, man, I'm telling you, he will rack up 100-plus tackles easily. Easily. Now, people are going to say, is he an upgrade over a Jordan Brooks or a Bobby Wagner? I would say no and yes. No, because I believe these guys are all around the same talent level. But yes, in the fact that he just has a one-year deal. So, whereas a guy like Jordan Brooks, I don't think has taken that step to elite status or anything the way you need to give him a long-term deal like the Dolphins did uh, you're able to evaluate Jerome Baker on a year-to-year -year basis and and then kind of decide if you would like to give him a, a contract for a few years because he's probably, what is he, about 27 years old now? So, you know what I mean? You get a chance to kind of a, a wait-and-see approach on that. Him and, of course, Dotson as well. And they still do need to go and get themselves a young backer too. So maybe they will be deciding between those two after a year. Real quick, I wanted to show you something. In Vic Fangio's scheme, they actually did play – Sometimes a legit Mike and Will. As you see, the strength of the formation right here is where David Long is, right, as the Mike backer. Watch when they switch this. They're going to switch, and then you'll see Baker tell Long to switch here because now the, sw f the strength of the formation would be over here because you have multiple receivers too. So if they were to run to the left, you have a bunch of blocking going on over here. Even though it's a balanced formation as far as the tight ends go, the receivers would – deter or, or would determine the strength of the formation in that standpoint here. So 
they able to work there. He tells Long to go there, and Long's able to shoot the drip gap, <laughs> even though he, he couldn't quite get there. Well, he looked like he did kind of get there. He clipped him up a little bit. But uh, as you can see right here, he was a legit will. So they wanted to try to keep him as much as they could away from having to take on blocks. But I'm telling you, in this day and age, man, you're going to take on blocks regardless. Watch him keep an arm free to make this zone tackle. He's working against the backside guard, so he leans into him, kind of gives him half a man to be able to keep the arm free in the setup leverage to make a tackle. So this is some very heady stuff here. Watch this. Uh, keep that arm free, and then he's in on the tackle. Okay. <laughs> Look, my one hand. Right, Christian Wilkins working with that guard. He's able to get into him. Boom! See him meet that. Keep that arm free. Cause this he can read this flow, and he knows that there is nowhere for Chuba Chuba Hubbard to go right here uh, because of the contain vent being on point. Still shows presence in that gap. Able to get a hand in. You see it right there. The arm sleeve right in on Chuba Hubbard. So later on in the offseason, I want to come back and specifically talk about linebackers and coverage. I think a lot of people out there have it misconstrued that linebackers or some linebackers can actually cover. Uh, if we're talking about wide receivers. I don't think any of these linebackers in the NFL can consistently cover slot receivers. So I noticed that any in every team that I cover, people always complain about the linebackers and coverage. And I just don't see it across the league. Right. Uh, you maybe have some guys who can match up with some tight ends, but even those guys can't match up with your Travis Kelsey's and Mark Andrews and guys like that as well. As far as Jerome Baker goes, um, I wouldn't say that that's his strong suit. I say he's he can be pretty decent at it, but a lot of times, man, they just had him in zone, pattern matching, like as you see right there, right? A lot of zone from him. That's what you should do for people anyway, right? You need to get more nickel and dime packages to have your defensive backs covering slot receivers, if anything, there. And then having these guys work kind of shallow underneath zone. You see him trying to keep up with Devontae Smith right here. But the pass rush gets home to Jalen Hurts, or he holds the ball way too long on that one right there. But that's usually what you see from a guy like Jerome Baker in coverage. A lot of zone. Yep, so his birthday's in December, so it's pretty much his age 27 season. Uh, as you can see here, man, he's been in the league since 2018. And, uh, yeah, he's he's putting some work, man. He's definitely putting some work. Multiple 100, yard, 100 tackle seasons, uh, a grip of solo tackles, no doubt about that. Uh, more of a sideline, a sideline cat, so not as much shooting the gaps or whatever like that, but some decent ta tackles for loss here. 15 QB hits one year, uh, seven sacks one year. So I would love to see uh, what Mike McDonald is going to do with Jerome Baker. We shall see here soon. Got to give it up for John Schneider, man, making chicken salad out of chicken shit and setting himself up in the future to where I feel like if it's a rebuild, they're having a competitive rebuild because – Right, you get a lot of contracts off the book doing books doing these one year deals, then you can set yourself up and maybe hit on some super prime free agents the next year while having a more flexible salary cap. So John Schneider, baby, your man's doing his thing, no doubt about that. But you know who else is doing that thing? That will be me, Jersey Murph. So make sure you tip in your waiter because you know I'll be serving that hibachi and make sure you get with goodchop.com slash YouTube. Top billing 120 is the promo code. So that's goodshop.com slash YouTube. Top billing 120 into that promo code. Make sure you are supporting the sponsors when you see them, baby. It only helps your boy be able to do more and more work for you guys. All right. As always, much love to everybody out there supporting. Uh, much love to all my top billing villains. Salute. Top billing. Top billing. Of town Top billing villains. Top billing. Top billing.